Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Corinthians 15.1-4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Ephesians 2, 8-9 through For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. John 3, 16 through 18, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Romans 3.24 being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Good morning, family. Tony here at Saturday, March the 18th. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, I got some cool information for you before I get started. I want to uh, talk about the gospel. If you haven't come to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't know whether you go to heaven if you died, if you don't know you'd go in, if you'd go in the rapture when Jesus comes for his church, or if you don't even know what the rapture is, then it's time to get saved. Getting saved is easy. I know it sounds uh, it sounds like um, something that you've got to do in church. It sounds uh, It's very churchy sounding. But it's simply believing the gospel, which is another churchy sounding word, obviously. Um, but it just simply means the good news. The good news that Christ, Jesus Christ, that he lived a perfect life, that he died on a cross, he was buried, and he raised on the third day. And that's what saves you. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth in him, believeth is the key word, in this word, in the Greek, is more than just a simple belief that he exists, okay? The demons believe Jesus exists. The devil believes Jesus exists. It's putting your faith and trust in. This word in the Greek means to put your faith and trust in. So put your faith and trust in Jesus that he died on the cross, was buried and raised on the third day. That's simple enough for a child to understand, and it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Believe it today. Put your faith and trust in Christ. And you have to truly believe with your heart. Um, this is a heart matter. Um, you come to God and you come to Christ with a contrite heart. Understand that we all have a sin condition. It's very important that you understand that we're all sinners. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That none is righteous, not even one. So we have to understand that we are all born into this from the Garden of Eden. That we're all born in a state of sin and a state of, of, of um, it's a curse, a curse of death that has been put on us because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. And by default, everyone that lives on this earth, if they don't accept Christ, is destined for judgment in hell. That's, that's the way it is. 
But Jesus died on the cross to save us from this curse and to reverse this curse. Simply believing in him and trusting in him is all that is required for salvation. Um, put your faith and trust in him. He will send you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you and sanctify you over the course of time. Sometimes it happens quicker for some, for others it's, it's a little longer, but you will change. It will make you a new creature and you will slowly begin to change. You will see a difference. Other people will see a difference because the Holy Spirit teaches you. It guides you. You, you can trust it. It always guides you the right way. It's um, It convicts you when you do something wrong. You, you will definitely notice a difference. Um, and and it, it, it's just it's simply believing and putting your trust in Christ. That's it. That's all it requires. In Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, You are saved by grace through faith, not of works. It is the gift of God, not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. There's no amount of works can save you. There's no amount of works can keep you saved. And there's no amount of works going to keep you or take you or take away your salvation. It's based on a gift that God gives freely for believing in his son. And that's it. Everything else is of the flesh. And of course, it's not a license to sin because when you sin, your flesh is cause and effect. You're going to pay for your sins on this earth in the flesh. Um, God can chastise you. The Bible says that God chastises those he loves. So if you live a life like the devil, then God could severely chastise you and cut your life short. So you want to you want to try to do right. I mean, your sins aren't held accountable to you. You're not accountable. I mean, you're not going to lose your salvation for sins. But living a good life is, is what God wants for us. He wants us to, to restrain from sin any time that we can. But um, just... This is something you just have to, to deal with and, and, and take it to God on every day. You know, just um, the way that you can highly reduce uh, the feelings and the urges is to stay in the Word of God, for one, and, um, and to congregate with others of like mind. And just um, living a Christian life is a hard life. There's never, no one ever promised it would be an easy life, but that's only because sin is so powerful in our lives. But... Knowing, having the knowledge that you have salvation will help you. <laughs> I mean, you're not trying to work to earn your salvation. In fact, uh, the good deeds you do after you get saved are the fruits of being saved. I mean, you, your, your desires will change. Everything will change when the Holy Spirit enters into you. So accept Christ today before it's too late because Jesus is coming back soon. And um, I believe it's sooner than anybody suspects. Um, at least maybe not the Watchmen community where we've been watching uh, for a long time, but, but for the world at large, they have no idea how close the world is to totally turn it upside down. Um, there's going to be seven years after the church leaves of the worst days the world has ever seen. This worst time period is going to be hellish. It's going to be uh, horrendous, horrible. Um, there's going to be evil spirits on the earth. There's going to be um, tyranny like the world has never seen, persecution and oppression. You know, God's wrath coming to the earth in the form of fire and floods and waters being poisoned, you name it. I mean, it's going to be a horrific time period. It's going to be massive famine and death across the earth. In fact, um, right off the bat, right when tribulation starts, a third of the earth's population or a quarter of the earth's population will be destroyed real quick. So you want to get saved before any of this happens so that you can avoid all of this. Jesus is coming for his church before the seven-year tribulation. So you want to get saved as soon as possible, right now. I mean, there's no reason to wait. Um, there's never going to be a time better than right now. Jesus says, come to me as you are. Don't wait until you feel like you're doing better. And all, because you can't. We, while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. So he doesn't want you to wait until you're doing better. He wants you to come to him now. You know, understanding your sin condition and understanding that you need a Savior. Because if you don't believe that, you, that, you, that you're a sinner and that you need a Savior, then coming to Christ is kind of a moot subject. Well, there's no point. You come to Christ for salvation because we know that we're sinners and that we're lost. It's just like the, the thieves on the cross. One of the thieves was, was mocking Jesus and scoffing and says, if you're the Son of God, come down off that cross and take us with you. And the, others, the other thief said to that thief, says, do you have no fear of God? He says, we are worthy of our sin, I mean, of our punishment. We are, you know, we've committed sin and we're worthy of this. But this man, Jesus, has done nothing wrong. 
And he looks at Jesus. He says, remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says to that thief, this day you shall be with me in paradise. He didn't have to do any works. He didn't have to get baptized. He didn't have to do anything. He just believed. He put his trust in. He put his trust. He accepted Christ. I mean, when he talked to the other thief, he said, you have no fear of God. I mean, he's already understands the, 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 the fact that Jesus is the son of God. He already understands that. He even calls him and refers to him as Lord. So he knows who Jesus is and he completely puts his faith and trust in him, knowing that he's a sinner and that he's lost without him. That's the way we all have to be. We have to come to him with a contrite heart, knowing that we're sinners, knowing that we're not worthy of God, and accepting the free gift of life that he offers through the sacrifice of his precious blood. And Jesus spilled every drop of his precious blood. Put your faith in him today. Don't waste any more time. Guys, I got some interesting stuff here. Um, hang on. Now, I've talked about this stuff a lot. Uh, over the years, I've talked about it quite, quite often in the past couple years. But i got to go over this again for any of this to make sense. So when I was at work at 2015 in the morning, um, I worked in a warehouse. I was the only person in the warehouse for the most part working. There was a couple other people in and out, but I was the main person back there. So when I come in, I get my radio set up, open up the doors. It was in the spring or summer when it was warm. I had, to, had all the doors open. I knew it was getting close to my break time. My break time was between 9 and 9.30, you know, whenever I, you know, whenever I wanted to go to break pretty much, but I usually went between 9 and 9.30, so I knew it was sometime in that area, but I didn't know what time it was exactly, but all of a sudden the radio, the emergency broadcast goes off, and, um, and it makes that sound, dang, 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 and then there was a long pause. Well, this wasn't long after Sandy Hook. So um, that was still on a lot of people's minds. It was on my mind. When that happened, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, what's happened now? And that long pause, I mean, 30 seconds, a minute, it, it seemed like forever. Then all of a sudden, the radio came back on. Everything was normal. But I had the urge to pull my phone out and look at it. When I did, it was exactly 9, 11 a.m. You know, of course, they could have planned that with the emergency broadcast, but it did happen earlier than 9, 11, because it was 9, 11 by the time I looked, which is probably a minute or two later. But nevertheless, probably had something to do with that. No big deal. But at the bottom of my straight talk phone, it said, your service ends March 23rd. And, and I knew that that meant that the literal service would end March the 23rd. But for some reason, I couldn't get it out of my mind. I'm thinking March the 23rd. I think that, I think that means something, but I don't know what. Why, why, why did I see that at that particular time at 9-11? You know, 9-11 like emergency. And then after hearing the emergency broadcast, what does this mean? Well, the next day, around the same time, I had my, my phone sitting on a uh, big plastic uh, drum, 50-gallon drum. And I walked over to it around the same time. I knew it was sometime around that time, but I didn't know exactly when. Picked up the phone. And it was exactly 9-11 again. I says, Lord, are you trying to tell me something? Because, I mean, this is kind of odd. So then I had to take some antifreeze up to the lab to test the pH. And I'd put the little probe meter in it. And you want to get to 7. 7 is neutral. You don't want it to be higher or lower. It becomes volatile. You can't use it. So if, if it's less or more than 7, then you have to add chemicals to, to get either acid or caustic to get the pH right. Because we got to get it as close to 7 as possible. 7 is perfect, you know. Of course it's perfect. But um, that's God's number, right? But uh, the thing, when I put the probe in, it went all the way to 9, then point one one and stopped. It stopped at 9-11. I mean, my, my jaws dropped. I mean, my mouth dropped open. I couldn't believe it. But um, so I'm like, Lord, what does this mean? This has got to mean something. Well, I forgot all about it years later. Um... In 2018, my brother Jack died on March the 23rd. It was on a Friday night. I got the phone call on a Friday night on March the 23rd in 2018. Um, and I thought to myself, well, maybe that's what God was trying to tell me, if that was God trying to tell me something. And I believe that it was. But it didn't occur to me to this year that maybe what he was trying to show me wasn't March the 23rd, the day per se, maybe, but more specifically, March of 2023. And um, the reason I say that is because of all the things that's happening this year and the fact that the rapture hasn't happened. And we know it's right around the corner. Any time now, Jesus is coming for his church because all the signs in the Bible are there. So um, I'm, I'm trying to go off memory here, but I want to look at these notes and I want to go over some things that, so in case I forgot. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's basically it. I just um, could that have meant 2023? And more specifically, if it meant March the 23rd of 2023, that's the first day of Nisan on the Jewish calendar, the first day of the year. 
So that means that we still in the previous year, which on the Gregorian calendar was 2022. Now I know that it is 2023 on the Gregorian calendar now, but God's calendar starts in Nissan and ends in Nissan. So I mean, you know, that's the that's why he taught us to look at time as well, or at least the Jews, which we were, you know, that's all mankind supposed to go by God's calendar, not our, our own calendar. I mean, he made the stars, the sun, and the moon. He made the calendar. He made time, right? So anyway, so March the 16th was day of equal parts. I woke up early and checked my phone. Um, I don't know. It was real early in the morning. It was like 3, 3.30, maybe 4.30 in the morning. And Gigi, with Blue Heaven, her notification that she had, had a new video up. And so I looked, I watched the video, and she's talking about March the 23rd. She's also talking about a guy who had a dream where God told him in the dream, like with writing, it says rapture warning, March the 23rd. Well, of course, that caught my attention, you know, because I've been looking at this. You guys know if you've been watching my videos, I've been talking about this number for a long time. And, and I've already mentioned it in one of the previous videos. So rapture warning, March the 23rd. Um, and from the 16th, which was and I should have made this video on the 16th. But um, after work, I've just been so tired. Um but what if what if that was a seven day warning from the 16th to the 23rd is seven days. And that would be start from the day of equal parts, which Mike with Repo Man 64 believes is the first day of Nissan. Um, I believe that the first day of Nissan is March the 23rd. But then again, you know, it, it's still very close, whichever way, you know, even if even if it's not, we're very close to it with one, with one week is pretty close. So what if it was a one a one week warning. So, so I'm thinking about that one week warning from the 16th to the 23rd. And in that same guy mentions um, something about being led to Genesis and reading about Noah and how God warned him that the flood was going to happen. And that's all he was getting at was that God was going to warn us when the rapture is going to happen because he warned Noah when the flood was going to happen. But what's very interesting about that is that God told Moses to build, I mean, I'm sorry, Noah, not Moses. He told Noah to build an ark that he was going to flood the world, but he didn't tell him the exact time. It took Noah 120 years to make the ark. And when God was ready, he told Noah it was going to be seven days and locked him up in the ark. He shut the door of the ark with him and his family inside. They waited seven days while in the ark, and then the flood came. So that's interesting that that was a set, like a seven-day warning, Right. So then Gigi's talking about Jeremiah and how he preached and warned the children of Israel for 23 years that they were going to be taken into captivity in Babylon for 70 years if they didn't repent. Okay, so then at lunch on the same day, on March the 16th, I was looking at my home phone again and one of the notifications, because I'm, I'm subscribed to a lot of different Watchmen channels, Watch Women channels, um, literally had a, a notification from Tom with Watchmen River. And his video was titled, Time to Get in the Ark. And I'm like, whoa. So I'm thinking he's talking about what, the very thing that I'm telling you guys about. So I watched the video and he's not. What he's referring to is Jesus being the ark. That we, it's time to get right with Jesus because he's, the, he's, he's like our ark. He's, gonna, you know, he's, he's the one that saves us, right? So that made it even more profound by thinking about it. So he, he posts a video that says, time to get on the ark on the 16th. Think about that for a second. On the 16th, he doesn't even mean it the way that I'm, I'm explaining it, that, that, G, that um, I'm sorry, that God uh, shut the door of, with Noah and his family inside the ark seven days prior to the flood. And he literally said that on the 16th, which is seven days before the 23rd. So I don't know what the odds of that are, guys, but that's pretty profound. And then um, not only that, but then the next day on the 17th, I'm at lunch and he has another video that pops up. I don't remember the title, but he's talking about um, how Ramadan, which is the Muslim holiday or the Muslim, you know, feast days. It's a, it's a month long fast that the Muslims do. It actually starts on March the 23rd. Now, here's just a hypothetical that I'm not saying that March the 23rd is the rapture date, but this is just a hypothetical. What if it were? What if March the 23rd was the rapture date? The Muslims would believe that Allah killed all the Christians <laughs> and you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. That's just, that's kind of weird. Uh, Ramadan starts on the 23rd too. But not only that, but it was also Tom's wife's birthday on March the 23rd. And I thought that was really cool. I mean, you know, there's, there's that's pretty, pretty stiff odds there that all that would happen. So, um, you know, my brother Kenny died on January 21st, 2021. And um, 
March the 23rd, 2021 was a very interesting day. Um, the, the year that Kenny passed away. Kenny was the only one in my rapture vision. He was looking down at the ground. I was 11 years old when I had the vision. And then he winds up, and I always wonder what he was looking for, why he was looking down at the ground. He, but he was the only one in my vision. Before the light came over and, you know, before the rapture happened and all, I saw him go first. But anyways, point is, um, he was looking down at the ground. Then he, when he developed cancer, lung cancer, and he had to move in with me for hospice. He wasn't living with me until hospice, and then he moved in with me. Now he's living at my house. He's, he wanted to be here when he passed. So he passes on my birthday, which is really odd, up to 21st of January, 2021. But that very year, you know, like I said, he developed cancer. I, I, I missed my point here. He developed cancer because, and he was sitting in a chair. He couldn't lay back because he couldn't hardly breathe. So he was sitting in a chair till he wound up developing a hunch in his back. And he was walking around looking at the ground. That's the way he was that's what happened. He wound up with a hunch in his neck right before he died. And in my vision at 11, he was looking down at the ground. It was like he was seeing into the future. Not exactly the events that would happen, but maybe a timeline of the way things would happen. You know, I don't know. But um, anyways, so what was really interesting, that was that was really interesting. I mean, what are the odds? It's, um, you know, my brother Jack's already dead and I only have one other sibling who lives you know, hundreds of miles from me, and she don't come to visit. My sister don't come to visit me anymore because of her birds. She can't really leave the birds. So the only time I get to see her is if I go down there. So she's kind of out of the picture. Jack's out of the picture. Kenny was the only one left in my life, and he died on my birthday with a hunch in his back. Like in my vision, he was looking down at the ground like he had a hunch in his back. It's, what, what are the odds of that? But I saw him go first in the vision. So obviously, even though I, the, the vision was about the rapture, I saw him go first. And if the rapture, we're not going to see anybody go first because it's going to happen in the twinkle of an eye. We're all going to go at the same time. So he was the dead in Christ. I just didn't understand that then. I always thought we were going in the rapture together. So sad, but it was encouraging that he passed on my birthday because it was kind of like God was comforting me. You know, it was like, you know, he, he went so peacefully, you know, and he was the, the night that he, before he passed, he had um, woke up one time before you know, before he kind of came in response or anything. He was alive, but he was just breathing. It was almost automated. But the last time he opened his eyes and was aware of anything, he smiled at everybody and waved. It was almost like God took him then, like like almost like he was already knew. I don't know. But anyway, so March the 23rd of 2021, it was Aaliyah Day in Israel. Aaliyah in Israel, in um, Hebrew, it means to go up, to rise. And to, 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 it's the day that they celebrate going back to Jerusalem. The day of going back to Israel. The Jews going back to Israel called Aaliyah Day. And also the, uh, on that very year, on March the 23rd, beside being Aaliyah Day, they were also celebrating Joshua taking the, the children of Israel across the River Jordan, which we know is a shadow and type of Jesus taking the believer across the the. Um, the great descent, which is what Jordan means, the great descent. Jesus taking us to heaven, the promised land. So there's a shadow type there, right? And so um, they were celebrating that, on, the, which was actually in March the 23rd, 2021, was Nisan 10 on the Jewish calendar. Nisan 10 is also the day they bring the lamb into the house to learn to, you know, to get used to the animal before they sacrifice it so that it's more of a a, more of a sacrifice. They, they kind of gain a little love for the animal before they slaughter it so that it becomes a true sacrifice and not just, you know, going through the motions. So, so on the 10th of Nisan, four days before they sacrifice the animal, they bring it into the house. And that's also the day that we're celebrating Joshua going across the river, taking the children of Israel across the river Jordan. Now understand that he actually did that on the Passover, on Nisan 14. But I guess because of all the festivities and the things that they're doing on the Passover, they couldn't squeeze in. Joshua crossing the River Jordan on the 14th. There'd be too many things going on. So they do it a little bit early. They do it on the 10th, the day that they actually take the sacrifice in. So kind of goes along with Passover in that respect. So, you know, so anyways, so that year <clears throat> on March the 23rd, 323, there's more to this, guys, a whole lot more. But this is just a point I want to bring up right now, and I'll get to some more in a minute. It was also my daughter, who's also is named Aaliyah, not because of the means the rise or go up. I didn't even know that until 2020 that her name meant that. I found out, you know, inadvertently, I was watching a video about Israel and they start talking about the Aaliyah. And I'm like, that's my daughter's name. What is that? When I looked it up and saw what it meant, I was just in shock. 
We named her not after the singer Aaliyah, but because of the, the singer Aaliyah, the name we thought was pretty. So we changed the letter and the way it was spelled. And instead of spelling it with a Y and H, no, we just spell it A-L-I-E-A. -E so interesting enough, it's the day of her first concert band, her big concert band. I thought it was marching band back then, and that's what I'd said, but then I later corrected myself. It was actually wasn't marching band. Marching band was done. It was actually the first big concert of her concert band. She's in all the bands and stuff. So th what was interesting is this. 323 in Strong's Concordance means a showing forth, a proclamation, an inauguration. It was actually they were having an inauguration in Israel that very day as well. So a lot of stuff was going on in Israel, to say the least. And it was having an inauguration. On the day, that means inauguration. <laughs> what are the odds, right? But also, my daughter's band, before she goes to band, she had to come home and get ready. She brings home the brochure to give us. It's like, what do you call it? The, the program guide, I guess you could call it. The program guide, sure. It said the band, you know, band, whatever. But it also says... Um, the, the theme of the band for that day was show and tell. On the day, 323, that means a showing forth, a proclamation. Uh, what are the odds? And I said there was more to it than there is. There is more to it. Because that previous year in 2020, and I'm pretty sure it was 2020 on Father's Day, Hourly Watch, Patrick from Hourly Watch YouTube channel, put out a video about a comet, the same number, 323, that in all of Stellarium and thousands of years had never moved out of its spot. It did a little retrograde motion in Leo, but it never moved out of that spot. It was always there in that particular spot. Um, I guess for thousands of years, it's never moved out of that spot. But all of a sudden, on Father's Day, and I'm pretty sure, guys, that, I mean, you could go back and check these facts because, I mean, I, it's been a few years ago, but I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that it happened on Father's Day sometime in 2020, on, but I'm pretty sure on Father's Day, it, which is even more profound if it was, that, that comet starts moving. And it goes all the way around the galaxy and it for like a whole year. And then it comes right back, maybe in the fall. But it comes all the way back around and it lands back where it started in Leo, which is Jesus, you know, the Lion of Judah, and starts making that retrograde motion again. It's like it was showing forth. It was proclaiming something in the stars. What did it mean? But isn't it odd that the very next year, all these things start happening with that number and with that date? So what is it all pointing to? Could it all be pointing to 2023? The spring, the Mar March of 2023? Could it be, guys? Maybe. I don't know. But it sure is exciting to find out. Um, I don't want to set dates or anything. You know, I always say this is a high watch day. I can't predict the date because I don't know the date. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a prophet. I'm not anything. Um, I just love the Lord, and I believe he's showing me things, and I want to share it. So um, I think that's why he's showing me, not because I'm special, but because I show it, because I share it. Show it, share it. Anyways, a sharing forth. <laughs> Anyways, no. So 323 means a showing forth. And um that's really weird that that comet did that. And, and, and all these things that just keep getting connected to that. And then here we are this year, literally a week away from the 23rd, looking at all these convergences. I mean, and guys, of all the craziness that's out there, one of the most profound to me, which is completely overlooked, nobody's talking about it. It's like it. It's like it's not even a big deal, which is really mind-blowing right now. Because five years ago, if we had got this information, it would have been everybody's focus. But not now. Not with World War III and political craziness and this and that and all the weirdness. Too much stuff to even mention going on. This done took the back burner. This is like, this is like 50, number 50 on the top news stuff. Is that the Pentagon put out an article saying that there is a mothership in the solar system that could send probes to the Earth? Now, why would they say it could send probes to the Earth unless it's, they know that it's sending probes to the Earth? What in the world, right? So uh, nobody's talking about it. It was on it was on Fox News. It was on Jerusalem Post and other posts. It was posted all over the internet. They Pentagon the Pentagon said that there's a mothership. And nobody's talking about it? Guys, you know I don't believe that, they come, that, that there's aliens from outer space coming to Earth. You know what I believe. I believe that aliens are fallen angels. Because when I was 10 years old, I had that dream. And a voice told me when I saw this UFO that and people going to it. And the voice in my head said, come to the light. It said, come to the light. And everybody's going to the light. And the, the, it's coming out of that UFO. And I'm like, 
This is not good. This is not good. I'm just watching. I'm like, this is not good. In my mind, I'm 10 years old. And then that voice, when I wake up, says, fallen angels fly these crafts. So you know how I feel about them. I believe they're fallen angels. I believe God told me that at 10 years old. So if there's a craft in the solar system and capable of sending probes down, which it probably already is, guys, how close are we to the rapture of the church? Once we know in Revelation 12, it very clearly seems that when the church goes up, the devil comes down. The baby, the child in Revelation 12, being the church, it gets raptured into heaven before the devil can devour it, before the dragon can devour it, which is Satan. And then Satan is cast to the earth where he goes after the woman that gave birth to the child, never has a chance to go after the child because the child's gone. The child is raptured. The baby's gone. Like in my grandson, the baby's gone. That's the rapture. That's why I said that was a rapture dream because in Revelation 12, when the baby goes up, the rapture has occurred. And that group of people... The, that baby, which represents the brethren in Revelation 12, overcomes the devil by the word of, the, of the, their testimony and the blood of the lamb. But there's another group in Revelation that is overcome by the dragon or overcome by the devil and the beast who is slaughtered in the name of Jesus, who, who, who were martyred. So we know there's two different groups and we know that first group must be the church because it is raptured into heaven. So guys, the baby's gone could possibly be a reference to that very event. And that's maybe why I dreamed it. The red balloon is all time markers pointing to this turkey thing where they put the red balloons up when the babies were missing. All this could be harbingers, guys. Harbingers are timelines. I believe God's been giving me timestamps throughout the years of things that are happening. You know, I've had a lot of craziness, but the craziest thing in recent days that I've seen is a news article saying that there's a mothership in the solar system and nobody's even talking about it. I mean, granted, it's not that big a deal to me because I already knew, you guys knew that this was going to happen. But for the, the world at large, five years ago, if you had to say there was a mothership in the atmosphere or in the uh, solar system, that would be the only talk on the radio and TV ever. Everybody would be, I mean, it would be crazy. It might even cause chaos in the streets, thinking that there's a mothership up in the solar system capable of sending probes down, a threat, a threat to humanity. Nah, eh, not today. They're more threatened by, <laughs> by the threat of nuclear war and, you know, disease and famine and food shortages and power outages and train derailments and chemical spills and water poisoning and earthquakes and volcanoes and uh, the list goes on and on forever. Guys, we're in the end times. And more specifically, we're at the end of time and we are about to see Jesus Christ. Put your faith and trust in him today because the longer you wait, it's like playing Russian roulette with your soul. Because if you're waiting for some special time that you're in church or that you're doing better and you, you don't feel so ashamed, you're going to get left behind because the rapture is going to happen in a moment, a twinkle of an eye. That's what pa uh, Apostle Paul says. Mo in the moment, a twinkle of an eye, those the dead in Christ shall rise and the uh, first, and those that are alive and left remaining us will be called up with them to meet with them in the air. But it's going to happen, boom, in a twinkle of an eye, um, which is faster than light. It's the glisten that happens off of your eye. It's not the blinking of an eye. The twinkle of an eye is when the light hits your eye and it sparkles. That happens in a fraction of a second. It's instantaneous. So if you think you're going to come to the Lord and accept Christ and believe in him in a fraction of a second, maybe it's possible but I'm not going to take a chance myself. If I, if I were that person, I'd be wanting to get saved now. You know, everybody's worried about prepping and putting food in their, their pantries and all. And you'd be worried about your soul because I promise you that during the tribulation days, you ain't going to be worried about the food that's in your cabinet, your closet. You're going to be running for your life. You're going to be hiding in the woods, in the ho foxholes or wherever, wherever you can find somewhere to hide. It's going to be horrific. I mean, it ain't, people don't understand the tribulation days ain't something where you can go hide from. The devil's going to be on the earth. He's going to have his minions as, in, in a form of, 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 you know, technology that will find you no matter where you are. Your DNA signature is, in, is out there in reality, and he will find you, and you will be killed if you don't accept the mark of the beast. There's not going to be no, how does uh, Brother Tyler, Generation 2434, says you're not strong enough to Rambo through the tribulation. No one is. No one's going to be Rambo through the tribulation days. You're not going to be out in the woods hiding off the grid. It ain't going to happen. You will die along with every other Christian. And if you accept, if you die for Christ, of course, you're going to go to heaven. 
you still can get saved during your tribulation. But you are going to see and experience the worst time the earth has ever seen. Tribulation that is unparalleled. Worse than the Holocaust, Stalin killing millions of people, every bad thing that's ever happened, all wrapped into one, all the horrific nightmares of your life, all the horror movies, all wrapped into one big nightmare, and it's all going to happen in that seven years. So get saved now, guys. You don't want to be here. Um, who is it? Uh, J.D. Frog's always saying, people say, so you just want to escape. You just want to get out of here. Yes. I do. I don't want to be here. With, do you really want to be here with demonic spirits everywhere? Listen, if you, if you don't accept Christ now, that's what's going to happen. And um, yeah, sure, you might be helpful to those people who haven't accepted Christ during the tribulation. If you survive, <laughs> if, if, if you don't get killed first, the point is, is that now is the time of salvation, not the tribulation days. Listen, um, God has a plan. He already knows who's going to be left behind and who's going to go for first. Be in that group that goes first. Accept Christ now while there's time, guys. I love you all, and I don't want you to have to go through that. And I certainly don't want anyone to go to hell. So please, begging you, please, please believe in the name of Jesus Christ, the only name that saves us under heaven, the only name, Jesus Christ. That is who saves us. His precious blood. Put your faith and trust in that because that's better than all the prep food and water that you can possibly store for the next thousand years or a million years or for eternity. Jesus Christ is the water of life and the bread of life. Without him, there is no life, only death. Put your faith and trust in him today. I love you guys. I'll see you on the next video. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Bye.